hello and welcome uh, to this uh, video. I am continuing work on my William Morris journal um, and I've decided at this point that I'm going to make a cover for it and I'm going to make a soft cover. So I've got quite a few bits of the fabric still left um, and I've kind of um, pulled out a few bits of uh, lace and uh, kind of doilies, those kinds of things uh, as well. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use as the basis for my soft cover. This is um, like a delivery envelope. It's the kind you get from Amazon or quite a few places I'm using them now. And then um, I've been making a few soft covers just recently using this kind of stuff. So, um, and it works quite well. Now I am intending to sew my um, uh, cover. So I'm going to be using just as a, a very temporary sort of fix, put the fabric on, um, this temporary glue stick. Um, I got mine off of Amazon. Um, but yeah, so let's have a look at how uh, you can make a soft cover make it any size so um bear with me i've got a lot of, lot of envelope here um right so when you're going to make uh, a soft cover the first thing to do is to decide or the first thing i do i'm not saying this is how it should be done but this is what i do i decide what's the biggest size uh, i'm going to have in my signature now, sometimes I don't make my signatures till after the cover. Um, sometimes I already have them. So I already know that kind of this is this here. This one because this one hangs out more than the other. This is kind of the biggest size that I um, want to make uh, put inside my cover. So I'm just going to, to measure it. Now I'm going to use inches for this. Uh, and so we've got seven inches. Just going to grab a pencil. So we know that this way needs to be seven inches. And then this way, and I'm taking it out to here because um, I don't really want this sort of hanging out, although possibly that. So maybe we'll go five and a half which is what these papers were if I remember rightly just a little bit more let's go maybe five and three quarters so you can do this in centimeters you can do it in um inches it's entirely up to you so because I am um going to use this on my machine I'm trying to avoid areas where I've got any sticky residue so I know this is going to so I'm, I am going to uh, cut that off you have to uh, I do apologize uh, my camera area is not as big as this great big packet so I am literally just cutting that bit off and i can see here i've got some glue residues or so i'm going to kind of avoid that end if you are not putting it through your sewing machine it's not an issue okay so i'm going to measure and again i'm not bothered that this is a bit you know sort of rough and ready it will disappear underneath. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure five and three quarters this way. Um, I had a pencil just then. So I've got five and three quarters uh, there. But then I need that double because I'm going to, I'm going to need um, room for when it's open. So that's uh, I'll measure another. Bear with me. I'm just going to do this way. Five. So I'm just going to, from there, going to measure another five and three quarters. Now, I 
um, would then give myself uh, a little bit of an overhang and I would leave like a quarter inch either or either side. So I'm going to add another half inch on there. So this is, is this this product? So this is where my um, uh, signature will be. And if my signature was open, that's where it would be. And then what I've done is I've given myself like a quarter of an inch either side. So I get this little bit of um to play here. So if anything else comes further out, it's not going to hang out too much. Okay. Um, the other thing I need to consider for this bit is the, the depth of the spine that I want. So here are my three signatures and I'm not squishing them. I'm just kind of letting them sit there. So um, I've kind of got uh, about an inch there, um, but I need a little bit more wiggle room for this. So I'm actually going to give myself an inch and a half on my spine. Okay, I'll show you how it works in a minute. So I'm actually going to add on another inch and a half on my spine. And I'm going to draw a line there. And there. so this is basically my spine so that my signatures will sit within that. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. So all in all, I've got five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. That's the width of the signature. I have um, then got, um, I've added on quarter of an inch either side, so that's another half an inch. And then I've added on an inch and a half for my spine. Okay, that's it this way. Now we're going to need seven inches this, this way. So let me mark off where my seven inches is there. In fact, drawing along the ends of it looks easier. But then I want to add again another quarter of an inch. In fact, I haven't left. If I, I've left a. I guess I have left a quarter of an inch. Yeah. So I'm going to put another quarter of an inch for the top and a quarter of an inch for the bottom. So that's another half an inch. I mean, you can do it in centimetres and you can do it however you want, really. This is just my kind of prefer preferential way of doing it. So I'm just going to draw this line. Hopefully I can keep it straight up to there. I'm just going to check the measurement. So it should be, no, it should be seven and a half, shouldn't it? Be talking. Yeah. Seven and a half. I'm going to around this way just so I can double check. So I've got seven and a half. Yeah. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. With the accuracy, I'm just trying to make sure I've got a reasonable kind of accuracy so that I don't end up with a really, really wonky kind of uh, cover. So it will look a bit better. And all these lines I'm drawing, they're all just going to disappear later. Okay. So I've now got all my measurements. So if I go over it again, five and three quarters, another five and three quarters, that was the width of my signature. I added on a half an inch. A little bit of wiggle room either side, and then I added on an inch and a half for my spine, and then this way seven inches for the height of my signature, and then I added on another half an inch for my um my wiggle room. Okay, so I'm going to now hopefully we'll get rid of some of this paper. I'm going to Fold this along that line as best as I can. Okay. 
So it just needs to get that bit there. Because what I'm looking for is kind of a double double depth, if you like. Oh, sorry, sorry, double um uh kind of uh, amount of, of paper. So just so that I can get rid of some of this, I'm just gonna cut this just so I can get rid of a lot of them there and we can see what we're doing now. Okay. So I folded that along there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my craft knife and my metal edge ruler. Uh, and I'm going to take that end off. And then I'm going to tidy this up. I'm just going to make sure that I've got seven and a half. Seven and a half. So basically I'm coming along here. I'm taking that off. Okay, so that's my um the basis. And I'm gonna fold that now the other way. And then all of those things will disappear on the inside. Right. Now, as I said at the beginning, what I don't want to do is to put glue on this that is going to mock up my machine. If you're not, um, if you're not using your machine, then you can use glue, you can use, um, if I was if I was just sticking things on, I'd either use the paper bindery glue or the matte collage glue from Janie's Originals. Um, but uh, it's you know whichever is your preference. So what I but what I am going to do just to make sure that this is not moving around too much, I'm just going to use a little bit. You don't need much. This is literally just forming a little bit of a tack just to keep things together for our cover. Now, the other thing I want to do, um, in fact, no, I don't want to do it quite yet. We'll do, we'll do this first. So I'm going to um, put all of these nice kind of things, the decoration to the side, and I'm just going to grab some of these um, pieces. Now, the way I've cut them, I've not got many scraps, but if you if you have scraps, even more, even better, if you like. So I need to decide kind of what I'm looking for in terms of how this is going to look. Um, now, I'm looking, first of all, I'm looking for a piece that is going to be able to cover it for the inside and a piece that I would be happy with both of those. So I think this piece, or maybe this piece is just smaller. No. I'm thinking this piece I'm going to keep for the inside of the cover. So that piece I'll put to one side as well. So we're going to use some of this. Right. Right, um, and what I'm going to do is I am going to just, um, just for sake of ease, I'm just going to cut some strips off of each with my um, my rotary cutter, and then. Um, we can just have a play. So, a okay, so I'm literally just going to cut some um, pieces off. Right, I'm just grabbing my other. This is, 
Um, I've used uh, an inch ruler because um, I like to work in inches. If you like to work in centimeters, you can use a centimeter one. I'll just grab this because it's easier. So let's cut. Let me cut a strip down there. To go through, right? So I've got some of that. See, I think I don't think I'm going to use this. I think that's too dark for what I want on the front. I'm going to go with these kind of neutrals. So I'm just going to fold that and I'm going to cut a piece of that. Um, this one, oh, let's uh, fold it that way, and then I can cut off some of that. Oops. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit less. In fact, what I might do is just cut that. It off and make sure I'm keeping it in view. Like I say, if you've got these, are really good ways of using up scraps. I haven't really got scraps from this, uh, so I am just making myself a few strips to cut bits from. But if you have scraps, these soft covers are a really great way to um use up your soft your scraps so so my i've cut from my uh, strips i've cut a few few bits off i've got a bit more there i've used my pinking shears but um before we start applying those i we need to put something on here i put a little bit of glue just already just it's just a little bit because what i want to do is first of all cover it now this is a piece of um uh, cream sort of cotton you can use old pillowcases old bed sheets it's just just provides us with a little bit of a base and it also will give us a decent edge um all the way around so kind of like sealed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my um uh my uh ruler and i'm i'm going for like three quarters of an inch and I'm just going to cut that down it doesn't need to be um, exact uh, but roughly I'm going to do that all the way round right so, what I've got now is I've got my um, cotton on there. We're just going to fix it round. So we're going to do the corners first. And I'm literally just putting a little bit of this glue. And then I'm folding these in, trying to get them kind of like a... Um, so this is like an, uh, a right angle, if you like. So we're getting kind of a nice sort of 45 degree... Uh, Fold, and you need to do that on all four corners. This is not how, if you were um, covering a hard cover, or even with thicker material. But this, this is nice thin, lightweight material, so it's quite, it's nice and easy to be able to do this. So again, just using that glue, and I'm folding the edges in extra there. Remember, this is doesn't need to be holding it down completely. What it's doing is it's just providing um, kind of like a, a tack. I mean, you could pin it if you would prefer. The problem with pinning this bit is because you're going to have all the rest on the, the front as well. It would be hard to get it all to, uh, to stay. So this, like I say, is just acting like um attacking just keeping it in place temporarily and this glue does not gunk your machine up 
So, uh, which is why I'm using it. Like so. Mm -hmm. Have I done this one? I've lost track of where I've been now. I'm going to turn this over like so. Now, I'm not bothered that I've got bits of glue coming through because now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this with our um, bits and pieces that uh, I have cut. So let's see what we've got. Just to keep the glue there. Um, right. Okay, look, let's see. So let's start with this, this bit here. Right there. Now, again, I'm just using the glue as a little bit of a tack. It's nothing major. It's just a little, just hold them in place as you are, um, as we're sorting it out. Just move that a little bit away. And... So I'm just going to keep doing this and uh, when I am done, I will uh, come back to you with, um, just tell you what the next step is. So now the next step is to take this to my machine and to um, uh, sorry, I'm just fiddling around now. Take this to my machine and uh, give it its first sew, and I will come back when I have completed that. The cover is now sewn, or this first layer of the cover is now sewn. Before I go any further, I want to do one thing. So I'm going to um, just get my ruler. Now, if you remember the measurements, uh, we had five and three quarters, five and three quarters, an extra half an inch, and then an inch and a half of the spine. So I need to find the center, and my math makes that at six and three quarters. So, and just check that, yeah. So I'm then going to use zero on that that bit there, and my spine is uh, an inch and a half. So that's three quarters that side and three quarters that side. And I'm just going to draw myself. These lines will be covered um, in a bit. So the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to give this a bit of a crease. Just to give, give it a kind of a rough sort of idea of where the spine is. Because when we add the next kind of bits and pieces, I don't really want to be adding much on the spine area. I don't want to make it bulky because when you're piercing the holes for the um to actually sew it, you know, you don't want it being really uh bulky. Okay, so uh yes, yeah, so we've got roughly got the spine there. So now I can see yeah, you know, this is here it's kind of my spine area. I'm going to avoid this and I'm going to look at what I'm going to add on here. So this fabric was also in the bundle. It's beautifully, very um, nice and sheer. I'm just going to 
cut with my pinking shears a little strip. Now I'm going to just cut the other side too. I just want it all, all of this pinked. That's the word. Or I might have just made that up. I don't know. Um, I mean, what I didn't say is that I did use a zigzag stitch. So I, I went all the way around and then I did kind of like over all the individual bits just to make sure they were all secured down. So I've got some of this. I'm going to concentrate on the front. I might put some stuff on the back in a minute. The brown lace. I don't know, do I want the brown ones? I don't know whether that might be too um too dark. Um oh, I've got bits sticking to me left, right, and centre. Um might I might even use a little bit more of this, but like this. Use that bit there. Kind of a, a little focal point. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm going to put this in there. Um, okay. I quite like that. Bit much over there. I am now just just fiddling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead uh, and sort this out. And then I will be back when I have I am ready. I am we'll just say one thing with this, I am gonna pin it. I'm getting quite a lot of layers on here now. And um pinning it is probably going to be the easiest way to do this. So the, these bits are now on, so this I'm intending to be the front and this the back. Um, I'm just looking at this. I might actually move it across a little bit, um, but I'll do that off camera, sew it, and then I will come back. The outside of the cover is now done. And I moved this slightly across, so yeah. Now, um, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, to cover the inside. Now, I haven't tried it yet, although I might at some point, where I actually put this on before I do the sewing so that it comes through. But for now, I'm quite happy that I'm going to use this um, as it is. Um, for the inside of uh, my journal. So, grabbing a pencil. I need to, I really need to go to that there. Hoping I can see that when I take it off. Uh, but it's cutting along that line. 
not cutting all the way down because then at some point I'm going to have to cut across. And then I think it's down here. It just seems to be like just along that crease line or just inside that crease line. So let's cut that. And if you want a neater, you know, line, you can do that with a a tree cutter but um I'm not too bothered. So there is my inner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Jamie's paper binder video and uh I'm going to I'm going to um hopefully this isn't plugged up. The only reason it clogs up is nothing to do with the glue. It's to do with the fact that I forget and I leave it with the lid off. So I need quite a bit. So I am just kind of drizzling it on. And then, oops, just use the spatula just to give it a bit of a and I'm probably going to add a little bit more as well, just because I want to make sure that I've got a good coverage and it's not so easy to spread when you've got the stitch marks on there it doesn't you know it's got a little bit of resistance here and there so I'm just uh, going to the, the bottom of this one and you don't want to Leave it too long either before we get this on. So, which way up is it? That way up? Is there a way up I want this? Possibly there. So, I'm not going to do is going to kind of fit this over. And then I'm going to use, excuse my arm coming across the back and covered in bits. I'm going to use a brayer. So we'll give this much chance of contact on the cover as I can. Um, what I other thing I would do is I'm just going to go around the edges, make sure I've got it stuck. Like that Up in this corner. And uh, I'm doing a little bit along here. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. Right, so 
See, that's going to need to dry for a bit, which is fine. Oh, because we're going to look at making um, this one template. Now, um, my spine, if you recall when we did this, oh, what's in my way? Um, I needed the full length, which was seven and a half. And then it was one and a half. So what I need, I've got three signatures. I need three evenly spaced lines. So I'm using the grids, the grid on the, um, do it this way, uh, to marking a quarter inch like so. In fact, I should have just done the whole thing. And then half an inch from that. And then half an inch from that, which is also a quarter. So this is where one signature will be joined, the second and the third, which gives them like um each a quarter of an inch either side, sort of wiggle room, if you like. But I'm just going to um, draw those lines in. Like so. Okay, and if I did this, this is these great things about these gridded rulers. You can see that they've got three squares that side three that side now i also need to find the center this way again use the grid so i've got uh zero three and a half no that's not four so three and three quarters three and three quarters so this that's my middle line so that doesn't look very uh, straight, does it? There, there, there. And then uh, we left a quarter of an inch either end. So the reason I'm putting that there is because that's just to give me a guide of where the end of my signatures will be when I'm making my, um, putting my signatures. So now you need to decide if you're going to have a three, um, three whole pamphlet stitch or whether you go long stitch or whatever. Now, if I had, um, in my signatures, if I had um, pages that were all different, uh, let me show you an example. I've got um, one here. Oh. And my signatures are not all the same size. She says, no, I can't find the smaller bits. Oh, this one, this one seems to have them all the same size. What does it? Yeah, picked up one where they're all the same size. Try another one. Yes, here. So you can see some of these pages are not the full depth of some of them. If I used a, um, a three-hole pamphlet stitch, that one would only be joined in the middle and it would give it a bit of a wobble. So I've used a five-hole. But because in this one, all my signatures are the same, I'm just going to use a three-hole pamphlet stitch. Okay. Now, I could measure them out, but I want to use... Um, this this is um the piercing ruler uh from Janie's originals 
and um i'm kind of uh looking for uh where i want to pierce uh, so that it lines up with the ruler there's no i i'm not going to particularly measure so bear with me i'm just trying to find my um my uh draw white marker so so i'm putting this one so this is going to be that center hole this here is where i will line up the ends of my signatures and so i need to decide where i'm going to have my three other two holes so i think i'm going to go um Two in from there and two in from there. You can measure it out, but because um, I want to use the piercing ruler with the piercing cradle, it just makes sense for me to do that. Okay, so now I know that I want to pierce here and to pierce here. Okay. And then I can just sort that out so i'm just looking it's going to be there i haven't quite got this line right it's going to be there and it's going to be there okay so we're there we're there and we're there so basically i haven't got my uh my lines drawn very straight but it's now be at least we know where they are Okay, so here, this does look like it's straight down here. So we're going to have one here and one here. So we're going to pierce there and there. So this is for the spine. This is for my signatures. They line up like so. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side. Be careful you don't wipe it off um and all i've got here are several bits of uh, package that i'm going to use now i need to make sure this is in the center so i've got some low tack tape and i know that the center keep that out of the way for a sec is six and a three quarters from the edge of that okay so i know that is where, and I'm just gonna double check, I'm gonna move it up. Yeah, okay, so that is where I want my piercing spine uh, guide. Sorry, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of low tack tape to hold it on. And then I'm going to, uh, Grab my piercing hole and I'm going to pierce as close as I can to the center of these crosses. Okay, so I want it to go all the way through. Like so, uh, uh, there and then the last one there there and there okay so that's my spine pierce i'm gonna leave that on for the moment just in case i want to re, re sort of go through those holes and then i'm going to bring in my piercing cradle is from Jamie's originals again I'm just hoping right now I can see I might just get away with it that way um I really could have done with with doing my in fact I might redo the, the lines I just want them so they're more central in there so I'm just going to wipe these off we're going to go back back to 
the spine template and we're going to go a lot closer to the end of the ruler this time so I've got the ends of my signatures I've got my center and I was coming into oh now that's not two I'm glad in a way it well it does matter because if I'm piercing here that is not where my holes are in my um, thing so I should be able to get away with this I'm going to re-pierce them so we're just going to double check yeah so just put that to the side bit of a but I think we'll get away with it. They're just far enough apart that it shouldn't impact. And the fibres, because the, the fabric is quite thick, the fibres will go over it. I just need to remember when I am um, sewing to use the, the inner one. Oh, should be there. Okay. Right. Do those just reinforce the poles. Okay. Right. So I'm going to bring this back in now. And I'm going to bring in my signatures um, and this is the order they're going to go in so I just need to find the centre and then I need to make sure the edges of my signature are lined up with these two end lines that we put in and then and hold on to the ruler and I'm going to pierce there and there and in there okay so I've got my three holes pierced okay and I'm going to um, bring that forward there open on the middle We go bring the ruler back in make sure they're lined up right. just one more to do So we are ready to stitch now. Um, I've got my uh, needle threaded with my wax thread and it's sort of roughly two and a bit times the height of the, um, so like one, two and a bit like that. We're gonna start with the center one so that the back, my apologies, we're gonna start with the back, um, Right. Just checking. Yeah. We're going to start with the back um, signature and we start by putting the needle through the middle hole, making sure we're going through the middle hole on each of the pages. Now remember this is handmade paper so it's quite thick and then I'm going through that middle hole here. That's his little back uh, signature. And make sure you leave a nice tail. We can always pull that through a bit more in a minute, but we don't want us to lose it. Um, but then we're going to come back through 
Um, now the hole, you can see it easier on this side, it's about here. I'm just going to very quickly just push the needle through so I can see where it comes out on the other side. No, it's not there, is it? It's there. That's why I couldn't see it and, and it wouldn't go through. Right, there it is. So there is my hole. I'm going to needle through there and then in through my signature. Like so. And just pull that a little bit more. Because now what I need to do is I need to go all the way up and in through this top one and out through the hole at the top. Okay, and then we need to come back through this hole, but we need to be careful that we don't end up splitting or going through that um the, the thread. We don't want that. So I'm through on the hole. I'm just now looking. Coming through on the signature. There we go. So but I do need for this to be the other side. So one piece is either side of the center. I'm just going to give it a good pull. I'm just going to check that it's tight on the outside. And then I'm going to, whoops, I've thrown my needle away. That'd be interesting. Don't worry, I'll grab that in a moment. So I'm going to um, tie it like that. I will snip it off. And then I'm going to get on and do the other two signatures in exactly the same way. One thing I would say that to do, if you can, if you've got some like bulldog clips, is to just hold this one out of the way. Um, it just means you're not getting yourself in a little bit of a muddle when you're trying to put your next one in. So I will try and retrieve my needle and sew the other two signatures in. So my William Morris journal cover is now sewn on. Uh, my signatures are now in place in my um, journal. So uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. So the next stage is to start adding some bits in, some ephemera, some more flips and flaps and pockets and all sorts. But uh, for now, I'm really happy with uh, how that's looking and how that's turned out. Um, thank you for joining me uh, on this uh, third instalment of my uh, William Morris theme journal. And um, yeah, uh, I hope just to be back soon with uh, some more uh, ideas for how I can uh, add things into my uh, journal. <laughs>